Orlando International Airport IATA, MCO, ICAO, KMCO, FAA LID, MCO is a major public airport located 6 miles 10 kilometers southeast of downtown Orlando, Florida, United States. In 2017, MCO handled 44,611,265 passengers, making it the busiest airport in the state of Florida and the 11th busiest airport in the United States. The airport serves as a hub for Silver Airways and a focus city for Frontier, JetBlue, Southwest, and Spirit. Southwest is the airport's largest carrier by passengers carried. The airport also is a major international gateway for the mid-Florida region, with flights by foreign air carriers. At 13,302 acres 5,383 hectares, MCO is one of the largest commercial airports in the U.S. In addition, the airport is home to a maintenance base for United Airlines. The airport code MCO stands for the airport's former name, McCoy Air Force Base, a Strategic Air Command SAC installation, that was closed in 1975 as part of a general military drawdown following the end of the Vietnam War. In terms of commercial airline service, the Greater Orlando Area is also served by Orlando Sanford International Airport SFB, and more indirectly by Daytona Beach International Airport DAB, Orlando Melbourne International Airport MLB, Tampa International Airport TPA, and St. Pete Clearwater International Airport PI. History Military years The airfield was originally constructed as a U.S. Army Air Forces facility and military operations began in 1942 as Orlando Army Airfield No. 2, an auxiliary airfield to Orlando Army Air Base, which is now known as Orlando Executive Airport. Orlando Army Airfield No. 2 was renamed Pinecastle Army Airfield in January 1943. At the end of World War II, Pinecastle was briefly used for unpowered glide tests of the Bell X-1 from B-29 aircraft before the program moved to Murick Army Airfield in California now Edwards AFB, for the world's first supersonic flight. With the establishment of an independent U.S. Air Force in 1947, the airfield was briefly placed in caretaker status, until being reactivated during the Korean War as a Strategic Air Command SAC facility for B-47 Stratojets and KC-97 Stratofreighters and renamed Pinecastle AFB. In the 1950s, the base began hosting SAC's annual bombing and navigation competition. A B-47 Stratojet crashed during the 1958 competition, killing Colonel Michael Norman Wright McCoy, commander of the 321st Bombardment Wing, which was the host wing for Pinecastle AFB. The following year the base was renamed for McCoy. The base later was home to the 306th Bombardment Wing operating the B-52 Stratofortress and the KC-135 Stratotanker. It was also used by EC-121 Warning Star Early Warning Aircraft of the 966th Airborne Early Warning and Control Squadron, a tenant unit at McCoy assigned to the Aerospace Defense Command. During the Cuban Missile Crisis in October 1962, McCoy AFB became a temporary forward operating base for more than 120 F-100 Super Sabre and F-105 Thunderchief fighter bombers and the primary base for U-2 reconnaissance aircraft flying over Cuba. One of these U-2s was shot down by Soviet-operated SA-2 guideline surface-to-air missiles near Baines, Cuba. Its pilot, Major Rudolf Anderson Jr., USAF, was the crisis-only combat death. Following the crisis, McCoy AFB hosted a permanent U-2 operating detachment of the 100th Strategic Reconnaissance Wing until 1973. McCoy AFB was identified for closure in early 1973 as part of a post-Vietnam reduction in force. The following year, McCoy's 306th Bombardment Wing was inactivated, its B-52D Stratofortress and KC-135A Stratotanker aircraft reassigned to other SAC units and most of the McCoy AFB facility turned over to the City of Orlando by the General Services Administration in late 1974 and early and mid-1975. 
USAF responsibility for the airfield's air traffic control tower was turned over to the Federal Aviation Administration (FAA), and the airport established its own crash, fire, and rescue department, initially utilizing equipment transferred by the GSA. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Civil military years. In the early 1960s, when jet airline flights came to Orlando, the installation became a joint civil-military facility. Early jetliners such as the Boeing 707 Boeing 720, Douglas DC-8 and Convair 880 required longer and sturdier runways than the ones at Herndon Airport, now Orlando Executive Airport. Nearby lakes and commercial and residential development made expansion impractical, so an agreement was reached between the City of Orlando and the U.S. Air Force in 1962 to use McCoy AFB under a joint arrangement. The military offered a large AGM-28 Hound Dog missile maintenance hangar and its associated flight line ramp area in the northeast corner of the field for conversion into a civil air terminal. The city would then cover the cost of building a replacement missile maintenance hangar on the main base's western flight line. The new civil facility would be known as the Orlando Jetport at McCoy and would operate alongside McCoy AFB. This agreement became a model for other joint civil military airports in operation today. Airline flights to the Orlando Jetport began shortly after an agreement was signed by the city and USAF in October 1961. Over the next few years airline flights shifted from the old Herndon Airport renamed in 1982 as the Orlando Executive Airport IATA, ORL, ICAO, KORL, FAA LID, ORL. In 1971 scheduled airlines were Delta Airlines, Eastern Airlines, National Airlines and Southern Airways. When McCoy AFB closed in 1975, part of the facility stayed under military control to support Naval Training Center Orlando and several tenant commands. There are only a few enclaves on the original McCoy AFB site that the military still uses such as the 164th Air Defense Artillery Brigade from the Florida Army National Guard in the former McCoy AFB Officers Club Complex, an Army Reserve Intelligence Unit in the former SAC Alert Facility, the 1st Lieutenant David R. Wilson Armed Forces Reserve Center supporting multiple units of the Army Reserve, Navy Reserve and Marine Corps Reserve that was constructed in 2002, and a large Navy exchange for active active, reserve and retired military personnel and their dependents. Civil-only years In 1975, the final Air Force contingent departed McCoy AFB and the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority was established as a state-chartered local governmental agency and an enterprise fund of the City of Orlando. GOAA's mission was to operate, manage and oversee construction of expansions and improvements to both the Orlando International Airport and the Orlando Executive Airport. The airport gained its current name and international airport status a year later in 1976, but retained its old IATA Airport Code MCO and ICAO Airport Code KMCO. The airport became a U.S. Customs Service Foreign Trade Zone in 1978, said zone being designated as FTZ No. 42. In 1979, the facility was also designated as a large hub airport by the FAA based on flight operations and passenger traffic. In 1978, construction of the current landside terminal and airsides 1 and 3 began, opening in 1981. The original International Concourse was housed in Airside 1 and opened in 1984. Funding to commence developing the east side of the airport was bonded in 1986, with runway 1735, now 17R, 35L, completed in 1989. Airside 4 opened in 1990 and also contains an International Concourse for the processing of international flights. Airside 2, which filled out what will become known as the North Terminal Complex, was completed in 2000, with the last additional gates added in 2006. Runway 17L, 35R was opened in 2003, providing the airport with a total of four runways. In 1978, the airport handled 5 million passengers. By 2000 that number had risen to 30 million. 
Today it covers 54 square kilometers, 20.8 square miles, and is the fourth largest airport in the United States by area after Denver International Airport, which covers 136 square kilometers, 52.4 square miles of land area. Dallas Fort Worth International Airport, which covers 70 square kilometers, 26.9 square miles, and Southwest Florida International Airport, which covers 55 square kilometers, 21.2 square miles. MCO has North America's fourth tallest control tower at 345 feet, replacing two earlier Air Force and FAA control towers. Orlando was a designated Space Shuttle emergency landing site. The west side runways, runway 18L, 36R and runway 18R, 36L, were designed for B-52 Stratofortress bombers and due to their proximity to NASA's John F. Kennedy Space Center, were an obvious choice for an emergency landing should an emergency. Return to launch site RTLS attempt to land at KSC have fallen short. The runway was also an emergency divert site for NASA's Boeing 747 shuttle transport aircraft when relocating orbiters from either West Coast modification work or divert recoveries at Edwards AFB, California or the White Sands Missile Range, New Mexico. Eastern Airlines used Orlando as a hub during the 1970s and early 1980s, and became the official airline of Walt Disney World, following Eastern's demise, Delta Airlines assumed this role, although it later pulled much of its large aircraft hub operations from Orlando, and focused its service there on regional jet flights, specifically with Atlantic Southeast Airlines, Comair and Chautauqua Airlines, all part of the Delta Connection system. All Delta Connection service ended September 30, 2008. After the merger with Northwest Airlines, Delta Connection service to Grand Rapids started. Delta Connection service to Raleigh, Durham also started and service to Miami began on March 27, 2011, but service to Miami has since ended. In recent years, Delta Airlines has increased its service at Orlando to many places around the U.S., as well as seasonal service to Cancun, Mexico. On February 22, 2005, the airport became the first airport in Florida to accept E-Pass and SunPass toll transponders as a form of payment for parking. The system allows drivers to enter and exit a parking garage without pulling a ticket or stopping to pay the parking fee. The two toll roads that serve the airport, State Route 528 Beachline Expressway and State Route 417 Central Florida Greenway, use these systems for automatic toll collection. In October 2006, a 100 space cell phone parking lot for drivers to use while waiting for passengers to arrive was open. The lot is set up as a free Wi-Fi hotspot, enabling drivers to use their mobile devices to access the Internet, check email, and monitor flight status. Around the same time an express pickup service at each terminal allowing drivers to park their vehicles temporarily at a secure location just outside the baggage reclaim area in order to meet their arriving party in person was opened. A fee is charged for this service and is only available to e-pass and SunPass users. The original terminal building, a converted hangar, was described as inadequate for the task at hand even when it was first opened as Orlando Jetport. After its closure in 1981, it passed through several tenants, the last of which was UPS. It was demolished in May 2006. On February 1, 2010, Allegiant began operations at the airport. The company moved one half of its Orlando Sanford International Airport SFB schedule to Orlando to test revenue at the higher cost airport. After evaluating the routes out of Orlando, the carrier decided to consolidate and return its Orlando area operations to Sanford, citing an inability to achieve a fair premium at Orlando as anticipated. Passenger preference for Orlando Sanford International Airport, higher costs at Orlando than expected, and a more efficient operating environment at Sanford. By the end of 2015, the airport handled 38.8 million passengers, surpassing its previous record of 36.4 million in 2007. In 2017, the airport reached 44.6 million passengers, surpassing Miami International Airport to be become the busiest airport in the state of Florida. Topic terminals and concourses The Orlando International Airport has a hub and spoke layout with a large main terminal building and four airside concourses accessible via elevated people movers, with a total of 129 gates. The main terminal building is divided into two terminals, Terminal A on the building's north side and Terminal B on the building's south side. 
There are passenger check-in and baggage claim facilities in both terminals, which also share two security checkpoints, one in the West Hall leading to airsides 1 and 3, and another in the East Atrium, leading to airsides 2 and 4. Unlike the similar setup used in Tampa, passengers are required to go through security before accessing the people movers. Airsides 1 and 3, and later Airside 4, were designed by KBJ Architects, while Airside 2 was designed by Helmuth, Obata and Kassebaum, Hellman Hurley Charvet Peacock Architects, and Rhodes plus Brito Architects. CT Shu plus Associates and Rhodes plus Brito Architects designed renovations that were made to Airsides 1 and 3, which were completed by April 2010. Airside 4 currently serves as the airport's primary international arrivals concourse. Airside 1 also handles some international arrivals. Arriving international passengers who require immigration and or customs clearance are processed through those checkpoints in the Airside terminal where they arrive. After clearing U.S. immigration, passengers collect their baggage and clear U.S. customs. After clearing customs, international passengers must ride the people mover to the main terminal. Airside 4 provides escalator access directly from the customs hall to the people mover platform. This has eliminated the requirement for arriving international passengers to go through a security inspection between the customs area and the people mover, and as a result they now have the option of bringing their checked baggage with them on the people mover. Alternatively, passengers also have the option of placing their baggage on a transfer belt in the customs hall for transport to the main terminal's baggage claim. Passengers who are connecting to a flight in Airside 4 or clearing customs in Airside 1, as well as airport employees, will need to go through security upon exiting customs. The airport features an on-site Hyatt Regency hotel within the main terminal structure. The hotel is located on the East Atrium side of the terminal with a fourth floor lobby level and guest rooms beginning on level 5 and above. The airport features an expansive lobby area for guests awaiting flights, convention space, several bars, and two restaurants including a signature restaurant on the top level of the terminal building overlooking the airport facility and runways below. Topic: Terminal A Terminal A consists of the northern half of the main terminal, with tramway systems to Airside 1 and Airside 2. Airlines operating check-in and baggage facilities within Terminal A generally operate out of Airside 1 and Airside 2, but that is not always the case. <laughs> Airside 1 Gates 1-29 Secondary International Arrivals Concourse Part of Original Terminal, opened in 1981 Airlines operating scheduled flights from Airside 1, Aeromexico, Avianca, Azul, Copa Airlines, Frontier, JetBlue, Silver Airways Charter Airlines operating from Airside 1, Magna Charters, Miami Air International, Extra Airways, World Atlantic Airways Gates 20, 22 to 28 are capable of handling international arrivals. The club at MCO. Topic: <inaudible> Airside 2. Gates 100 to 129. Airlines operating scheduled flights from Airside 2, Alaska Airlines and Southwest. Topic: Terminal B Terminal B consists of the southern half of the main terminal, with tramway systems to Airside 3 and Airside 4. Airlines operating check-in and baggage facilities within Terminal B generally operate out of Airside 3 and Airside 4, but that is not always the case. Airside 4 also houses the primary international arrivals concourse used by many European airlines. Topic. Airside 3 Gates 30-59 American Airlines Admirals Club United Airlines United Club Part of Original Terminal, opened in 1981 Airlines operating scheduled flights from Airside 3, American, Spirit and United Topic. Airside 4 Gates 70 to 99 Primary International Arrivals Concourse The Club at MCO 
Delta Airlines Sky Club Airlines operating scheduled flights from Airside 4, Air Lingus, Air Canada, Air Canada Rouge, Air Transat, Bahamasair, British Airways, Caribbean Airlines, Delta, Edelweiss, Emirates, Eurowings, Iceland Air, LATAM, Lufthansa, Norwegian Long Haul, Sun Country, Sunwing Airlines, Thomas Cook Airlines, Virgin Atlantic, Valaris and WestJet Gates 8287 are capable of handling international arrivals, and Gates 90, 92, 94, and 96 are nearing completion to be used as swing gates. Topic: Notable services. Delta Airlines was the first airline with jet flights, with DC-8 Fanjet Royal Service flights. Eastern Airlines the Wings of Man, became the first official airline of the Walt Disney World Resort, and sponsored an attraction in their Tomorrowland called, If You Had Wings. Later when Eastern closed Delta took the attraction over, it was called Dream Flight. In the early 1970s Delta, National, and Eastern Airlines began wide-body flights to MCO, National with the DC-1010 and minus 30 and Delta and Eastern Airlines with the L1011. Eastern had wide-body, intrastate service with L1011 flights to Miami. Lufthansa's and Virgin Atlantic's Boeing 747-400 are currently the largest airliners at the airport. Virgin Atlantic has multiple daily flights from the UK, including London Gatwick, Manchester, Glasgow, and Belfast, along with Lufthansa's one daily flight to Frankfurt and Main in Germany. During peak seasons, up to five Virgin Boeing 747s may be at Orlando's gates at once. British Airways competes with Virgin to London Gatwick with up to ten Boeing 777s a week. In March 2015, Emirates announced that they will begin daily service to the airport from Dubai International Airport beginning September 1, 2015. The airport had tried to attract Emirates for five years before the service was announced. Orlando International was the first airport in Florida served by Emirates. The airline expects three major markets for the flights, leisure and corporate travelers along with locals of Asian heritage traveling to Asia, which is well served by the airline. Greater Orlando Aviation Association Chair Frank Kruppenbacher called the new service, "...without question the biggest, most significant move forward for our airport." and estimates that the local economic impact of the new service will be up to $100 million annually. The inaugural flight was made with an Airbus A380. Regularly scheduled flights operate with Boeing 777-300 ERS. Topic terminal expansions and renovations Airside Terminals 1 and 3, both of which opened in 1981, recently underwent major renovations designed by architects C.T. Shu plus Associates. The new terminal designs incorporate modern architectural features that includes new skylights and expanded concession areas. In addition, the mechanical and electrical systems were completely overhauled in each terminal. The general contractor was Hensel Phelps Construction Co., for both Airside 1 and 3. The project was completed in both terminals in 2010. In 2012, British Airways announced the opening of a «shared lounge» in Airside 4. Topic. Rental car quick turnaround facility Two state-of-the-art car rental facilities were recently completed on both the North Side Terminal A and South Side Terminal B. Select car rental agencies currently operate on-site car rental pickup in the ground level of the main parking garages. The new facilities have relocated the car rental pickup process to the new facilities and have allowed additional space for off-site agencies to relocate to the on-site airport facilities. Topic: <laughs> South Airport Intermodal Terminal. The South Airport Intermodal Terminal is currently under construction approximately 1 mile due south of the main airport terminal. The new station, which is partially being funded by the Florida Department of Transportation, will serve as the Orlando station for the Brightline Higher Speed Regional Rail Service to South Florida, possibly Sunrail, and a link to International Drive. 
The station, which will be connected to the main terminal via an automated people mover APM system, is mostly reusing plans from the original Florida High Speed Rail Orlando Airport Station, which would have been northern terminus of the initial Orlando-Tampa route along the Interstate 4 corridor, a project that was killed. As part of the estimated $684 million price tag for the intermodal terminal complex, the airport authority is also building a new 2,500 space parking garage. A future connection to the SunRail commuter rail service is also being explored. The route to the current SunRail line would travel along a Orlando Utilities Commission rail spur, before either branching off to the intermodal station, or have an intermediate transfer point onto light rail to complete the journey to this station. Also, multiple options are being considered for the link to iDrive, either an elevated maglev train system built by American Maglev Technology, connecting the airport to the Orange County Convention Center, the Florida Mall, and the Sand Lake Road Sunrail Station, or a light rail link running along a similar route as the maglev alternative between the airport and International Drive. South Terminal Complex. In May 2015, the Board of the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority GOAA voted unanimously to approve construction of the $1.8 billion South Terminal Complex STC, which will be located directly south of the existing terminal. The STC will be built adjacent to the South Airport Intermodal Terminal, which was completed in early 2018, and both will be connected to the existing terminal via a new automated people mover APM. Phase 1, which will be known as Terminal C will encompass approximately 300 acres and will include new aircraft taxiways and aprons, a 2.7 million square foot terminal building with 16 to 24 gates, and a six-story 5,000 space parking garage. Construction of the STC began in 2017 and will be operational by 2021. In June 2018 GOAA approved the expansion of Phase 1, known as Phase 1X, which will further add another six gates to the south. The two construction firms building the new south terminal are Hensel Phelps Airside, and Turner Kiewit Joint Venture, TKJV, for Landside. Vanderland Industries will be providing the new high-tech ICS baggage handling system BHS. Airlines and destinations Topic Passenger Topic Cargo Topic Statistics Topic Domestic Statistics Topic Top Destinations Topic Airline Market Share Largest Airlines at Maco October twenty seventeen to September twenty eighteen Topic International Statistics Orlando International Airport was the 14th largest international gateway in the United States and second largest in Florida behind Miami International Airport for the year ending June 2013. The airport handled 3,694,774 arrivals on international flights during that period, of which 82.9% were carried by a foreign airline and 17.1% by a domestic airline. <laughs> Top destinations Airline market share Carrot 1 includes Air Canada Rouge Topic Annual Traffic Topic Transportation 
The Orlando International Airport is a major transportation hub for the Central Florida region and provides various ground transportation options including public transit, private transportation, and car rental. Road The main terminals are fed by Jeff Fuqua Boulevard and Access Road, which are fed by Florida State Road 528 and Florida State Road 417, respectively. Other major highways in the vicinity of the airport include Florida's Turnpike, Florida State Road 482 Florida State Road 15, Florida State Road 436, and U.S. Route 441. Links Links, the local metro area public transportation system, operates a sub-station at the airport with public bus service to downtown Orlando, Sunrail, and other area routes. The airport is served by buses Lynx 11, 42, 51, 111, 436S and Fastlink 407. The airport is the terminus of the Lynx 11, 111, and 42 routes and all of them also service the Sunrail station at Sand Lake Road. Passengers have a free transfer between Lynx and Sunrail at a Sunrail station. <laughs> Disney's Magical Express A complimentary motor coach transportation service to all 24 Walt Disney World Resort hotels. The motor coach service is operated by Mears Transportation and is available to Disney guests with resort reservations. An agreement with Bags Incorporated also provides checked luggage pickup and delivery system for Disney guests utilizing the Disney's Magical Express service. Topic. Cruise Line Transportation The airport serves as a major inbound gateway for cruise line passengers departing out of Port Canaveral on lines including Royal Caribbean International, Carnival Cruise Lines, Disney Cruise Line, Sun Cruise Casinos, and Sterling Casinos, all operating motorcoach transportation to Port Canaveral, primarily with partnerships with Mears Transportation. Helipad and other A de facto helipad, referred to by GOAA as a «helistop», in view of its limited facilities, is located on the top level of the terminal top parking garage and is available landing space with proper clearance for private transportation via helicopter. It is often used for transportation of high-profile celebrities, elected officials, and business and governmental executives to and from the airport. See also B-52 Memorial Park Florida World War II Army Airfields Innovation Way World's busiest airports by passenger traffic <laughs>